Raw data needs to be diagnosed for existing problems, explored for new hypotheses, and transformed or repaired in order to increase data quality and output. DLUCA package makes these steps fast and easy. Moreover, DLUCA collaborates perfectly with Tidyverse, for example with dplyr and ggplot2 packages. Das in this video will first diagnose the data, particularly we will diagnose categorical and numeric variables, we will have a deeper look at outliers and missing values, then we'll explore our data We'll calculate some descriptive statistics, we'll check normality and visualize normality distribution, and we'll have a look at the correlation. Finally, we will transform or repair our data by imputing missing values, imputing outliers, and by categorization of numerical variables with different methods. So, let's get straight into it. We can think of diagnosing our data similarly to diagnosing a disease. We just try to figure out what is wrong. First of all, we can check whether the type of variables is correct. For instance, if we see a text or a factor for a clearly numeric variable temperature, we would be alarmed and would know that we need to fix it. Then we can immediately see which variables has missing values and how many. Lastly, we can see how many unique values do we have in every variable, which is particularly useful for categorical variables. Speaking of categorical variables, using diagnose category function, we can diagnose all categorical variables from our dataset at once. Such diagnosis reveals names of categories, their counts and percentages, and even ranking number from the biggest category to the smallest. Diagnosing all numeric variables at once is similarly easy. Diagnose numeric function calculates not only most common descriptive statistics like minimum, first quartile, average, median, third quartile, and maximum, but also gives you the number of zeros, negative values, and even number of potential outliers for every numeric variable. By the way, outliers, how would we diagnose them? Of course, we would count them and get their percentages in every variable. DLooker does it too. Moreover, it calculates three different averages. The mean of every variable with outliers, without outliers, and the mean of the outliers themselves. In this way, we can see how strong the influence of outliers for every variable is. For instance, the variable depth in Diamond's data has over 2,500 outliers. That's a lot. However, the means with and without outliers are almost identical. Besides, the average of the outliers themselves is very similar to the original average of the whole data. In contrast, the variable price with over 3,500 outliers is heavily influenced by them. The average of the outliers is almost five times higher than the average without them. That's deep enough diagnosis of outliers already. And if that weren't deep enough, DLooker can visualize the distribution of data with and without outliers. Let's plot them. If we don't specify any columns, plot outlier function will plot each numeric variable from our dataset. This plot displays the distribution of data with and without outliers in the form of the box plots and histograms, so that we directly see how our data changes if we remove outliers. If we remove outliers, they kind of become missing values, despite the fact that they weren't missing in the beginning. And if we want to diagnose our data properly, we need to deal with missing values too. And as always, the best way to deal with any data problem is to visualize it. Well, amazingly, the Looker package not only can visualize outliers, but can also do this in three different ways. The first one is the Pareto chart. In the Pareto chart, counts and proportions of missing values are represented in descending order by bars, and the cumulative total is represented by the line. It even tells you what the amount of missing values means, namely, missing around 24% of observations is still ok, while missing more than 40% of values would be bad. 
If you have a lot of variables and want to display only the ones with missing values, use only an A equals true argument. The only problem with Pareto plot though is that we don't know where the missing values in different columns belong to the same observation. But that's where the second type of visualization of missing values comes into play, plot NAH class, which shows you how missing values are distributed and whether there is any overlapping of variables between them. The only thing which is troublesome here is that overlapping itself could be difficult to see. If some variables have very few and some variables have a lot of missing values. Third method of plotting missing values solves this problem. Plot in a intersect function visualizes the combinations of missing values across columns. The x-axis shows the variables with missing values, while the counts of missing values are shown on the top of the plot as bars. The y-axis represents the combinations of variables and their frequencies. For instance, we see that two of the observations are missing in both variables, ozone and solar. So let's close the diagnosis chapter with the diagnose report function, which combines most of what we just learned, but not all, into one PDF or HTML document in seconds. Just run this line of code and explore the document. By the way, exploring is the second thing the Looker package absolutely nails. So let's get straight into it. Describe function provides descriptive statistics for all numeric variables in your dataset at once, if you don't specify any. Among them are average, standard deviation, standard error, interquartile range, skewness, and many quantiles. However, describe function becomes even more useful by collaborating with dplyr package. Particularly, we can group the data by any categorical variable and get descriptive stats for each separate category. Checking normality of data is a routine task of data scientists before analyzing data. Normality function performs a Shapiro-Wilk normality test for all numeric variables at once if none are specified. The ability of this function to work with dplyr helps here too, since we often need to check normality of groups before comparing them. The code you see consists of just four words, but conducts 12 normality tests, namely for three categories and four numeric variables. Now, imagine a dataset with 100 numeric variables and 100 categories you want to check the normality for. It would still take only four words to conduct 10,000 tests. Moreover, plot normality function visualizes the normality of numeric data and two most common transformations of data in case the normality assumption wasn't met. Particularly, we see histogram of the original data, quantile quantile plot of the original data, histogram of locked transformed data, and finally histogram of square root transformed data. Now we can even see whether the transformation improves something or not. In order to quickly check the relationship between numeric variables, we can use correlate function. If we don't specify any target variables, Pearson correlation between all variables will be calculated pairwisely. But let's have a look at only one variable, ozone. Nice, right? But plot correlate function is even more useful because it visualizes these relationships. We can, of course, determine the method of calculations, be it the default Pearson or a non-parametric Kendall or Spearman correlation. The shape of each subplot shows the strength of the relationship, while the color shows the direction, where the blue color is positive and red is negative correlation. Here again, by using some dplyr code, we can quickly check as many correlations as we want. Similarly to the diagnose report, EDA report function will produce a report containing most of the exploratory data analysis DLUCA provides. Moreover, if we here specify the target variable, we'll get much richer report. Let's have a look at the HTML output format this time. In this you'll see the descriptive stats, 
dinner multi-checks, correlation analysis and more, so feel free to explore it. In the last part of this video, we'll see how we can easily fix the problem with missing values and outliers. This part is actually my favorite. To be honest with you, missing values and outliers are like parasites on my data, and I just want to get rid of them. Now, thanks to the Looker package, I can do it easily and very effective. Check this out. Imputation simply means replacing a missing value with a value which makes sense. We can impute both numeric and categorical values. Numeric imputation can be done with a single value, like mean, median or the mode, or by a machine learning algorithm like KNN, K nearest neighbors, R part or recursive partitioning and regression trees, or MICE, multivariate imputation by chained equations. Let's use the air quality dataset again and fill out 37 missing values in the variable ozone via the predictor variable temperature using the average as a method of imputation. If we save the output of the function imputateNA in some meaningful name, for example blah, we can first have a look at the summary. The summary compares some metrics of the original and new datasets, before and after the imputation accordingly. First, we see that the standard deviation and the standard error got smaller, which is great. But secondly, let's plot both datasets and compare them. The plot reveals that distribution of a new dataset changed dramatically, which is not great at all, because we just made up some data which is far away from the original dataset. And the original data is the best guess on reality we have. So it's supposed to be kind of similar. Hmm, but does imputation then make sense at all? Well, let's use one of the machine learning methods, for example, k nearest neighbors, and look at the results. This plot looks much better, because the distribution did not really change, but some aspects of it became a little more emphasized. But does this mean that imputation by a single value is useless? Well, I've heard this opinion before, but I found that usefulness of imputation strongly depends on the data set. And the best way to impute, in my opinion, is just to compare all imputation methods with each other and take the best, even if it is a single value method. If we run this whole chunk of code, we'll be able to visually choose among methods. I think that our part, recursive partitioning and regression trees method, does the best job for the variable ozone in air quality dataset. Needless to say, the plots can be easily pimped with some ggplot2 syntax, as we can see in the code. Only three methods are available for imputation of categorical variables, mode, our part and mice. Let's take the diamonds dataset, make it a bit smaller, add some NAs and use the mice imputation. The plot of the results compares the frequencies of each category so that we can see which values were imputed. The summary command would give you the exact counts and proportions of categories before and after imputation. We have seen that DLUCA package can effectively find outliers and impute missing values. If the outliers are nasty, they can be treated like missing values. Therefore, if desired, the outliers can be easily replaced by the imputateOutlier function. This function supports the following imputation methods the mean, the median, the mode, and capping, which imputes the up outlier with 95th percentile and the bottom outliers with 5th percentile. Here, I would also recommend to compare all four methods before deciding which method is the best. And if we look at the plots, I think a simple average wins this time. Categorization or binning transforms a numeric variable into a categorical one. The following types of binning are supported. Quantile, 
equal, pretty, k-means and b-classed. B-classed is the most interesting because it is categorization using clustering techniques with bagging, where bagging is an abbreviation for bootstrap aggregating, which is a machine learning meta-algorithm designed to improve predictive performance. The B-class method sounds most fancy, so let's try this one first. The distribution of the ozone variable provides three intuitive groups. First, the parabola from 0 to 60, then short flat area from 60 to 80, and a steady decline till the end of the plot. Thus, let's set the number of bins or categories to 3 and name the categories with the argument labels. Plotting the results shows that our first intuition was correct. The parabola was singled out into a category. However, the third category is kind of small and has only two observations, which we can see using summary command. And if we want to know the exact number where the borders of categories were drawn, we just don't use argument labels in the binning command. If we check out all of other categorizations, we can choose the one we feel the best about. I would take the k-means because it has relatively similar counts of data in every category, while still describing the distribution with three traits of the plot we have seen, namely parabola at the beginning of the plot, plateau in the middle, and decline till the end. Using a simple dplyr syntax, we can easily add a new categorized ozone variable into our dataset. Similarly to diagnosis and exploratory reporting, we can produce a transformation report using a single intuitive command, transformation report. So, I hope the Luca package provides some value for you. It certainly made my life easier. That's why I wanted to share it with you. I am super curious what R package you find the most useful. Alright, that's it for today. If you like this video and want to see more, be sure to like and subscribe. I want to thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you again soon in the next video.